Bria here from Extra Actuarial and in today's video I'm talking all about the actuarial interview process. It can be intimidating going into an interview without having any idea what to expect, especially if this is your first one. This video is going to break down my experiences personally and what I've heard from members of my Actuary Accelerator community. Members of the AAC, the Actuary Accelerator community, are getting interviews all the time for actuarial positions and quite often they post what their experience experiences are so that everyone else can read them and get a better sense of what to expect. So I am combining all those experiences along with my own to give you this video about the steps and the process to expect when you get an actuarial interview. And make sure you stay tuned to the very end because I'm going to show you how you can get tons of interview resources for free in the Actuary Accelerator community. Okay, so stay till the end. The actuarial interview process is different at every single company. So what I talk about here is you're probably going to see some similarities in what you actually end up experiencing and some differences, but I'm hoping that overall you'll get just a better sense of what to expect. The first thing that usually happens is that the HR, the human resources department of the company, calls you for a screening call. And this is usually just a really quick interview where they're asking you basic questions that just kind of reiterate what is on your resume. They really just want to make sure that you would get along well with different members of the company and fit in well. They want to get a sense of your personality and they really just want to verify things on your resume. So usually this is a really quick quick call. It's just with an HR rep, not an actuarial manager or anything like that. And during this time, they're just going to ask you those simple questions. Sometimes this call will be planned in advance. For example, when I had my screening call, they actually emailed me ahead of time to figure out a time that would work well for me. But I've also had other experiences and members of the AAC have had experiences where they just call you randomly without any warning and ask if now would be a good time to ask you some questions. So part one of the actuarial interview process is that screening call. Sometimes instead of the screening call or in addition to the screening call, they also ask you to do a virtual interview. And this isn't a time when you're actually going to be talking to someone online. Instead, what happens is that they've recorded questions for you or have some predetermined questions and you have to record videos of yourself answering those questions. For some people, these can be really intimidating because they're not used to going and talking to a camera. It can be really impersonal that way. And also there's a lot of pressure to answer quickly. A lot of the companies will have only maybe half a minute or up to three minutes sometime to prepare your answers to each individual question and then you'll have to just record your answer on the spot. And they sometimes give you a time limit too for how long your response can be. So you may end up just getting cut off in the middle of your response if you aren't really good and quick with your time management during those interviews. So these are going to be stored on the company's systems and someone will hopefully go through your responses and if you they liked your responses, then they're going to continue on in this actuarial interview process. By the way, this has become a lot more common during COVID, I've noticed. More recently, I've noticed members of the AAC talking about these kind of interviews that they have to do, these video interviews where they just have to record questions or answers and they don't actually get to talk to anyone. And I've noticed a recent trend in that becoming more and more popular. Whether it will stick around after COVID is eventually over, I don't know, but it's something to definitely prepare for because it could be a possibility. Stage three of the actuarial interview process, and remember, sometimes these are in different orders, but I'm just gonna call this stage three, is usually a technical skills interview or test actually is a better word. This is a time when the company is going to test your technical skills and usually that is with Excel and possibly a programming language. Now a lot of companies test in VBA, which is a programming language that you can use for Excel, but other companies have given members of the AAC options. So they allow you to use VBA or Python or SAS or different programming languages in order to complete the test. So perhaps if you are really good in one but not another, that will be okay because the 
uh, interview questions may not require you to know a ton of different languages. Usually these tests are done either from home or you might have to in non-COVID times go into the office and do the test there. Uh, there are really a, a variety of different ways that these tests can be administered. None are the same, they're all different, and really they just want to test to make sure that your Excel skills are at the level that they need, or not just Excel, but your technical skills are at the level that they need for the position. This is a really good way to weed out candidates that say they are competent in Excel or extremely good at Excel. Um, on their resume, but don't end up actually being that great on the job. If you don't already know how to use Excel or VBA, make sure you check out the AAC. I'm going to give you a free month at the end of this video, and in there I have tons of resources to help you learn Excel, VBA, and Python. So I'm really excited about that. Go check it out if you still need those skills because they are so important for our actuarial interviews and just getting an actuarial job in general. If you have made it this far, then next is the in-person interview. Now, prior to COVID, this is when you'd actually go into the office and meet people. But right now, with a lot of positions being virtual anyway, and with COVID and everything, usually this is done via Zoom or some similar type of software, and you meet virtually. Usually these interviews require or not require, but have you meet with three to four different people from the company. In my experience, I met with an HR rep, I met with an actuarial manager who would be my manager, and I met with an actuarial manager that was from a different department, and I also met with an actuarial student, which is someone that's still writing their exams. So basically, it'd be someone that is already working at the company, but about a similar level as I would be at. So those are the four people that I met with and same will probably be true for you. You'll meet with several different people and sometimes the questions can get a bit repetitive but oftentimes you'll find that different people are asking about different things that are more relevant to them. So you won't find the HR rep asking a whole bunch of questions that are actuarial related. Instead they'll ask things about uh, your long-term plans and wanting to stay in that city or something like that, things that are more relevant to their position in the company. It really is impossible to prepare for all the different types of questions. It's hard to know what they're going to ask. So in the Actuary Accelerator community, I do have a full course in there about how to prepare for an interview. And in that course, I talk about the different questions that might be asked and how you can just prepare yourselves for a variety of different questions. I just, I talk about a whole bunch of stuff in there. So when you get your free month, make sure you check out that course. I will show you a little bit more about that at the end too. So once you're done at your interview, sometimes you actually go on to a second interview. Now this can be a little intimidating. You might talk with more people. Sometimes the length is shorter. Sometimes it's longer. It really just depends on the company. And not every single company does a second round of interviews. Usually it's just to narrow down the candidates even more. So second rounds aren't necessarily always going to happen. They didn't for my interviews, but I have heard of them happening for members of the Actuary Accelerator community. So it's definitely something to be aware of. And usually that's going to be maybe a week or two or three weeks after your initial interview, sometimes longer depending on how urgently the company wants to hire and how many candidates they have and all that sort of thing. The hardest part is waiting and that is the next step of the actuarial interview process. You just gotta wait and see what they say. So they are probably going to be needing some time to go through all their candidates and maybe interview other candidates. It's always a good idea to ask during the interview what you can expect um, in terms of time frame. When can you expect to hear back from them? And that way you're going to have a good estimate of how long you're gonna have to wait. And it also allows you to have a time frame for when you can follow up with them if you haven't heard back. So always ask that during the interview, but waiting can be tough. So during this time, just continue to apply to other jobs. You don't want to stop doing that. And hopefully you hear from the employer in a fairly short amount of time. Now, if the employer does reach out, it could mean that they're just telling you you didn't get the job. Sometimes that happens or they could be telling you that you did get it and letting you know that they are going to reach out to you with an offer letter. Um, your offer letter will contain things 
around the conditions of your employment, such as the start date, the salary, maybe your responsibilities or your job title, that sort of thing, to really finalize the agreement between you and the employer. Now, not every employer does reach out to candidates that they've decided not to hire. So if you do want to just confirm with them that you weren't hired, then you can always follow up with them. Sometimes it's just taking longer than they expected or they're just not reaching out and you just have to get in touch with them and they will let you know that they've decided to go with a different candidate. So as an aspiring actuary, there are tons of things that you can be doing to improve your chances of getting interviews and becoming an entry level actuary. I'm so excited to give you one a month for free in the Actuary Accelerator community. There are tons of resources in there. All you have to do is use coupon code interview at checkout. So right down below, I'm going to link in the description of this video to the Actuary Accelerator community. You can go there, learn all about it. It is an amazing group of aspiring actuaries all working to become in-demand actuarial candidates, get their first job, get interviews, get hired, all that sort of stuff. They're just amazing and they're doing everything they possibly can to make sure that they succeed in the actuarial field. And I would love to have you join us as well. You can get a free month. Just use coupon code interview and I'm going to right now show you what it looks like inside the AAC and just give you some resources that I know you will find helpful during this journey to becoming an actuary and getting interviews and succeeding at them. One of the members' favorite courses in the Actuary Accelerator community is this interview prep course. It guides you step by step on how to prepare for an actuarial interview. I actually show you how to do that by going through an example with an interview for Sun Life, which is a company here in Canada. So this is a really good course that you could go through. And remember, you can get a free month in the Actuary Accelerator community just by using coupon code interview. I'm going to put a link right down below this video to the Actuary Accelerator community so you can go use your free coupon code. In there, you'll also get access to our LinkedIn networking course, which is a three part course explaining exactly how you should network on LinkedIn because it is possible to get jobs without even applying to applications and open jobs online. Networking through LinkedIn is a way to do this and you could get jobs that aren't even available to other people. We also have this LinkedIn profile boost to make sure that your LinkedIn profile is the best it can possibly be. So you can check that out as well. And we have this actuary master course for actuarial resumes because it's really, really, really important that your resume stands out to actuarial employers. And this course shows you how to create your own resume that makes your unique experience stand out and makes it relevant to the actuarial career, which is really, really important. So I'd love to have you become a member of the Actuary Accelerator community. There are tons of resources in here to help you pass your exam, get a, your first job, and learn the technical skills that you need. Plus, there are interviews with tons of entry-level actuaries and other and people in positions that are very similar. There are recordings of all our past Q&A calls where members have come and asked me questions. And we have a roadmap so that you know exactly what steps to go through to make sure you are a top candidate or an in-demand actuarial candidate. Uh, so you can go through those resources and follow them step by step and you will learn exactly what you should be doing at every stage of your actuarial journey. I would love to have you join. Check out the link in the description below. Okay, that is inside the AAC. I hope this video helped you. I would love to have you become a member of the Actuary Accelerator community. Write down below in the comments. Let me know if you have an interview coming up. I would love to hear about that. And if you don't, let me know what part of this process just scares you a little bit. What part are you most worried about? For me, I hated interviews so much because I just I'm not good at coming up with answers on the spot. That's really something I hated doing. I'm not good at it. And for me, that's what worried me the most about interviews. It would make me nervous. I would really dread them, but I always got through it by practicing. And I talk about my techniques and how to do that in the AAC. I hope to see you in there. Bye for now.